it being 530, I will call this March 20th, 2023 public hearing, which is the federal annual public hearing to order. So this is our first order of business, which is the public hearing on the Northampton Housing Authority's federal five year and annual plans and amendments to the Northampton Housing Authority's admissions and continued occupancy policy and section eight administrative plan and the state annual plan. So to present on these items, I'll turn it over now to Executive Director Leeper, who will chair the public hearing, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not, but we can't hear anything. There's no sound. I am so sorry. Can you hear me, Ms. Nabad? Can you hear me, Kara and Jim? Yeah. Uh, I want to make sure. Yes. OK, so unfortunately, members of the public can't hear us. Is there any one other member of the public who can hear us? Is there they're, any? They're they're muted, so it would be. Yeah, they are muted. Yeah, they're muted initially. Um, uh, what I'd like to know is I'd like to know by unmuting, or if you could for one moment, any one member, Jeff, just any one member, and we'll ask them if they can hear us. And I'll Actually, continue talking. I'm, I'm sorry. That was my mistake, and I can hear you. My volume was off. Oh, Sorry. so we can proceed now with the meeting. Thank you, Ms. Nabad. I thank you for that. So now that we know that there is audio, I'm going to hand it over to Executive Director Leeper to present on these plans that I just mentioned. Thank you. The Northampton Housing Authority, in compliance with the Quality Housing and Work Responsibility Act, is required to prepare and approve an annual plan and five-year plan in the first and subsequent and fifth months years and submit the plan to HUD for approval. The purpose of the public of this public hearing, which was advertised in the Gazette on February 25th, posted at federal properties, management office, and website, so as to provide the public ample opportunity to review the plans as they're being developed and make suggestions to allow the Board of Commissioners to hear comments from interested parties about the five-year annual plans. The public housing admissions and continued occupancy policy and the Section 8 administrative plan and capital plan. The changes in the plans consist of minor amendments proposed as a result of regulatory changes made or authorized by HUD. Jack, if you'd kindly unmute everyone. And um, are there any public comments? Madam Chair, I ask that we wait, you know, five minutes or so, see if there's any public comments um, about this federal, um, about these federal plans. I have a point of uh, information. Can I, can I ask that? Um, I'm sorry, uh, I have a commissioner who's asking a point of information. Do we have attorney O'Connor here? Uh, yes, he is on. Okay, thank you. Yes, what is it, uh, 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 Commissioner Tarbutton, what is your point of information? Okay, I just wanna make sure I get this straight. The federal uh, plan public hearing. So, um, and this is regarding the annual plan, is that correct? This is regarding the federal annual plan. So this is in regards to McDonald House and Florence Heights only, and the, the federal programs that we run. Okay, so how, how much of a notice did you give to tenants to be able to participate in this? The initial advertisement went out on February 25th, okay. so almost 30 days. So did you have any training or anything, any teach-in so they would know exactly what to do with this? What do you mean training or teaching? Well, I'm just thinking that- We, held, know, we, held, a, we held a RAB meeting. Um, and pr provided notices to residents that they could attend the meeting in person so that they could ask any questions that they saw fit and provide any input that they saw fit. Okay, so no, what my question is, and you posted this, at, you just, you posted it at the two federal buildings, is that correct? Well, it only applies to the two federal buildings. So right. there only yeah. be input from the two federal buildings. Well, when, when I say uh, information or teachings, I just, when you say, oh, this is up, do, do you know, what is the feedback from residents that they understand what it is, what it entails? 
Uh, do you provide that at all? Because sometimes not everybody knows exactly what's going on. So that's uh, why just I'm a asking. Point of, uh, just a point of order. I don't mean to interrupt, sure. but I do want us to I do want us to make note of the fact that this is the public's opportunity, and that we commissioners will have an opportunity later on. That's just what to to address items about the plan, even how it was posted. I just oh, don't okay. want to take time from the public sure. to be able to offer some needed Thank comments you. now, but. And I would ask, and then I will ask our director Leeper to detail for for you, Commissioner Tarbutton, the um, specific outreach methods and the specific ways that we've tried to get residents to be more involved in learning about the federal and state and related annual plans. Okay, because I just didn't know if there was something out there I would like to have gotten a copy of it. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, Okay, but now I again, and I will. I would actually like to, if people are not, uh, are we sure that people can can so, speak? Um, Madam Mr. Chair, um, uh, Miss Nabod had her hand raised when it was public comment time. Um, she has raised her hand again. So, if you'd like me to proceed with the public hearing, um, I shall do so by calling on uh, Miss Nabod. I'm going to hand it back over to you then, Director Lieber. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, Ms. Nabod, if you'd kindly unmute yourself and feel free to make your public right. comment. Thank you. Um, okay, so I I went online and I it was really hard on the on the um, city website to locate the actual plan. And um, I understand what you're saying that this is Florence Heights and you know federal housing, McDonald House. Um, but it is a very extensive plan. And I did have questions about the plan, even though it's not pertaining to me personally, it does re it does per pertain to residents in Massachusetts. So I did have some questions. Um, one is that it noted that, that there were only 111 units that are public housing. Um, and I didn't, I was very surprised by that. I would think there were more. So I wanted to understand that part better. Um, another thing is that um, the resident advisory board, um, I would just wanna make sure that residents are, um, you know, they understand what all of this means because it's really extensive and involved. Um, and then the other part of it is um, it specifies that residents should have at least 30 days to review this. Like a resident advisory board should be established long before um, this plan comes out so they can be learning from different types of trainings and whatnot so that they know what to look for. And then the other thing is I noticed that there were no changes in a lot of things. And I wish that there were more changes for low-income residents in Massachusetts. So thank you. Thank you. Um, actually, uh, residents had 45 days. Um, notices were delivered to their door. Um, and um, I'll, I'll go into that when we get to the board part of this, but um, are there any other comments um, from the public uh, regarding the federal plans and the Section 8 administrative plan um, and fi federal five-year yeah. plans. Does anyone uh, from the public another question? Okay. So uh, there was one public comment. Um, I will now, now close the federal annual plan and fi federal five-year uh, plan public hearing and turn the meeting back over to the chairperson. Thank you, uh, Director Leeper. So uh, the first item will be the roll call, please. Yes, Madam Chair. So we're calling to order the regular meeting at uh, 5.39 p.m. Is that correct, Madam Chair? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson uh, Ken Sell. Uh, here. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. That's it. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Present. Thank you. And Commissioner Jones is absent. Okay, thank you. So now that we will turn immediately to the tenant staff and public comment section. So we'll start with tenants, please. Are there any comments to offer tonight before our meeting? Uh, 
So the, the first person on my list is uh, Mr. Kurdoff. Would you like to unmute yourself and just remind us of which development you are coming from and your full name? Hello, my name is Doug Kurdorf. I live at Four Sander and I am the vice president of the Four Sander Tenants Association. <laughs> Mr. Kierdorf, did you have a comment or are you just joining to listen tonight? No, I'm just joining to do my civic duty. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next person I have on my list is Angela Santanello. I don't have anything to comment today. I'm all good, thank you. Thank you. And then the next two individuals are calling from phone numbers. And they end in five six three nine and nine three nine four. You've been asked to unmute so that you can make your comment. That is me, Roy Martin, eighty one Con Street, apartment five two nine. Now I would like to know one thing uh, on this parking out front. Hang on, sir. Can't get that other phone to shut off. Uh, so, anyways, right to, to get back to it, the parking out front is what I'm talking about. Am I still with you? Yeah, Roy, is your other okay. number you're calling from nine three? I, I tried to hang it up. Okay, I I'm, I'm, to gonna, hang it up I'm gonna gonna take you out. Take one of them out. Yeah, there we go. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Roy. Go ahead, Mr. Martin. Okay, right. Now, all right, uh, the parking out front. Now, a lot of people that are parking out there, they all have their name tags on there and their numbers of their apartment and stuff. Now, I know Chris Gagney, right, has been signed up for a spot. And she's probably been one of the longest people outside of myself that's been here in this building. And uh, she can't seem to get a spot out front. Uh, now, I had proposed something with a person that has a spot out front. Her car is broke down, so she's having it fixed. And I had proposed that maybe she would let Chris park there and make an arrangement so that uh, when she gets her car back, that uh, Chris would give her back the parking spot. Now, I brought this up in the office today, right? And then I just got shot right now. So uh, the other thing I can't figure is how come everybody out there out front and nobody knew about it until after all these people had got spots out front and then all of a sudden it was so all you have to go get a doctor's permit. Now, why wasn't that put up at least for a draw, you know, for people's names to go in there that has handicap placards. I don't care because I park everything I got out back. You know, I'm way out by by you people's vehicles. So, but it don't and it don't affect me. I just I use a, a cart to, as a walker to come in with. But uh, but people like Chris, right? And she's having a real hard time now. And she's been in now the hospital a couple of times. And uh, uh, it seems like, and she's got her doctor's slip, and that went into the office. And I uh, can't seem to get anywhere out front. Now, there's a couple of cars parked out there. It's parked there all the time. Now, I mean, uh, I can see Larry White being there, yes. Right. No names. But I mean, how did all these people find out all of a sudden real quick before anyone else in the building found out about the parking out front? When I first went to that new handicapped parking that's out there. All right, that's what I want to know. I, you know right, I, can't, I can't make it any plainer. All right, you know, if we can't have a lottery on it, right? and make it fair for everyone in the building that's got a handicap placard. I don't want one. I don't want an out front spot, right? But other people in the building, okay, I know my time's up. Thanks, Roy. Thank you for your comment. 
Uh, and then we have one other individual that is a resident and she also has her hand up. That's Gwen. You have another comment, Ms. Nabod? Yes, this is outside of the hearing. I have a comment. So thank you. Um, my name is Gwen Nabod and I'm a resident at Hampshire Heights and I live in Northampton. And last month I came to the board to speak about the unexpected late payment notices delivered to residents on the 6th day of February. And then as a follow up, to that, um, NHA issued notices to all residents, reiterating their own rules, but they did not address reasonable accommodation practices or providing educational material for disabled residents or people on public um, income yeah. who should know their rights. Um, NHA reiterated that if someone is even one day late for the rent, the NHA can start an eviction. An eviction process in court, in case you don't know, <laughs> is a lifetime sentence. And the reason for that is because it's a mark on someone's name that never goes away because in Massachusetts, uh, it cannot be purged like criminal records can be. And so these arbitrary approaches by NHA unfairly and permanently harm people with disabilities or who receive public benefits. And um, so the problem is that NHA is reiterating the rental rules, but it did not address ADA, it did not address um, fair housing. It did not explain to anyone, if you are on a fixed income, let us know. It also stated that people were confused. And, and so that's kind of, um, I guess you could say that's a little derogatory. I don't think there's any confusion about knowing about these things. And so um, I think that there needs to be some kind of a solution so that people um, with disabilities are not um, unfairly <coughs> impacted just because they can't pay on the first of the month. So thank you. Thank you for your comment. Are there any staff comments tonight? Hearing none, are there any more comments from members of the public? Um, can I speak as a tenant on a tenant behalf? Oh, we'll go back to you. If you want to speak on a tenant, you want to speak as, uh, uh, as part of the tenant comments, Commissioner? Yes, sure. Okay, well, let's go back to tenant comments then for uh, the tenant Jada Tarbutton, please. Uh, sure. For the record, it's Joella. Just, um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I saw the Jada on your, Jada I saw the is, Jada on your thing, but I'll, I will only call you Joella now. No, 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 it's okay. It's all love. Um, I, I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to talk, I know it's going to probably be on the agenda, but the notices, uh, the notices to quit and, and notices that people are getting it, um, a letter came to clear, supposed to be clarifying, but it was actually more of an uproar here, at least in um, this uh, property in Savo House, where it presupposes that there was a friendly reminder, and that was written in a, in, in a, a, a a marker, it didn't say anything like that in the letter. And I think somebody maybe from another building, they had the same letter, it didn't come off friendly. So I think that there's a question was friendly. And um, so I've been looking into this and I, I, I asked the board, but it really caused a lot of uh, stress, undue stress. When people get those letters, you know, if it's on the sixth and the rent, according to our lease says on the seventh, um, you know, it's a little, uh, as one politician said it heavy handed. And so I'd like to get that, if we could talk about that. I know that we're gonna be talking about some other options of paying it, but paying rent. But I think that these notices, the one person said, I saw that notice at my door and it almost gave me a heart attack. So I would think that we could really come across as treating our consumers, which are our, our tenants, I think, a little bit more respect and that, you know, let's everybody, you know, we all want everybody to pay. I, I do. I want everybody to pay their, their, their amount of rent when it's due. Um, but I don't want them to feel like they're intimidated, coerced, or just frightened by it, or maybe even uninformed about what the real rules are. Is it, do we go to our court? Do we go by our lease? Do we go by what the law is? I'm still researching that. Do we go by the lease? Do we go by the letters that we're getting? It's really confusing. I think unnecessarily so. So, and then one other question, I don't know how to speak. Aren't we not supposed to be calling people's names? I mean, uh, mentioning names, just the first name and the last initial, didn't we have a, just a training on that? So 
If we yeah, I, I really, I, I will just interject here and just answer since you put that out as a question. I don't know how to stop the tenants from mentioning other people's names as they're speaking, but I am considering to calling to making a, a clearer statement before any tenant comment, public comment or staff comment that no other names are to be used and certainly no, not in any disparaging way in a public manner like this. So I regret that I didn't have a chance to do that tonight, but that will, that will move forward for members of the public to please refrain from, please just speak in your eye, in your eye voice, and let us know how you feel about what, you know, what, whatever it is you would like to say without involving other people, if you could. Thank you. Was that all you had to say, Ms. Tarbutton? I did, thank you. Hearing no other comments then, I would like to turn it over to the executive director's report. Kara? You're muted, Kara. All right, thank you so much. Um, executive director's monthly summary for March, 2023. Our GPR was $211,064. Total of rent collected was $206,395.03, which was 97.7%. The delinquency total is uh, current residents at $85,895.10. <clears throat> Public housing did not have any annual certifications this month. However, Section 8 held 41, um, 39 of which were recertified. Uh, two expired due to waiting for um, paperwork from uh, residents. Our wait list, um, one bedrooms, uh, federal applicants have 174, two bedrooms, 55, three bedrooms, 16, four bedrooms, two, and section eight has 84. And the state, um, state applications on the family uh, list has um, 16,700 and 73, which is 284 more than uh, last month. And the elderly has 4,304, which is 72 more than last month. Uh, public housing um, move outs had five, section eight had seven. Move-ins public housing had four and section eight had four. Public housing has one on notice. Uh, we have end of month four vacant ready, uh, end of month vacant ready or four. Um, end of month vacant unready or four. Um, and there's, uh, and all four are pre-leased. Uh, we completed five uh, turnovers, four of which were rehabs. We took in 554 work orders. Uh, we had started the month with 34 from the prior. We completed 483 work orders and we have 37 that we're finishing up for this month. Um, as uh, some of you may or may not know, Based upon um, being on the board member long, board, being a board member long term, we were asked to send out uh, rent reminders or friendly reminders um, based upon the fact that sending the notice to quit on the 10th um, was scaring people. Um, and so, so a few years ago, we started sending out a notice on the 6th of the month um, as a friendly reminder. It's just a just a statement actually of what the account has. Um, and then, and that occurs either on the 6th or um, whatever date is more beneficial. For example, if the 6th falls on a Friday, we do it the following Monday. There's no point in generating all those trees uh, if it's not necessary. Um, on or around the 10th, which, which we do the same thing. If the 10th falls on a Friday, we would do them on Monday. Uh, we do serve the notices to quit which we're required to. And at last month's meeting, um, a resident brought, one resident expressed concerns about the balance due notices and the notice to quit. So in order to address that concern, I did send out a clarifying memo to all residents explaining the difference between the friendly reminder letter and a notice to quit. The memo included copies of the sample friendly reminder and a copy of the notice to quit. Um, and so I think that there is still some confusion around that. Um, although rent is due on the first um, in Massachusetts, the law states that you can serve a notice to quit the day after. We would never do that um, just based upon the fact that it would generate 
so much um, and, and people do have some leeway. Massachusetts doesn't allow us to charge late fees until after the last day of the month, um, and, but their leases do say that it's considered late on the 7th. Um, on other updates, Hampshire Heights and Florence Heights basements on February 23rd, 2023, DHCD approved amendment number two to the scope of work for Waterfield Design Group to do a deeper existing survey of the existing conditions to include underground utilities, such as the existing draining system. On March 13th, 2023, Waterfield Design submitted their findings and are awaiting DHCD review. On March 17th, 2023, our team met with Tim Wong from Waterfield Design to review the paving portion of the project. Uh, further updates for this month, we became partners with the Salvation Army and are, not, and are now able to write vouchers with a monetary value to provide immediate emergency assistance directly to our residents experiencing food insecurity and provide assistance in getting clothing and household goods. We had two visits from the podiatrist and five residents utilized this on-site service. We had a meeting with Grow Food Northampton to discuss gardening and they really uh, re they recently received a large amount of funding to be put towards supporting gardening and public housing over the next three years. They will be able to cover the costs of seedlings, compost, educational workshops. They have already begun to schedule meetings with residents to discuss the upcoming gardening season. We had a meeting with the Northampton Community Res Resilience Hub to discuss ways that we can collaborate and support each other's efforts within the community. So ends my executive director's report. Thank you, Director Leeper. Yes. I'm going to open it up to the commissioners now. Please use electronically, if you will, I'd, although I'd already see Commissioner Tarbutton's hand. But what I'll do is I'll ask commissioners one at a time <clears throat> so I get around to everyone and um, hopefully there's not a lot of back and forth. In fact, if there are people who have same questions around the same issue, then maybe we'll piggyback on those. Want to start us off, please, Commissioner Tarbutton? Yes. Um, I just wanted to say I've been, uh, with the notice of quit, I have been asking for this to be on the agenda for, I think, two, three months. And so I think she did cover an executive uh, report somewhat, but I um, would have liked to have brought it up. Because what I what I'm I'm trying to understand, but what I'm reading is that when you say it's a friendly reminder, that's what you think it is. That's not what tenants see it as. And I can see where that may be the the goal is to try to send out a reminder. But to say it's friendly when it's not perceived that way, I think that that needs to be reexamined. It's just like an example in a, a, a training I went to. Well, they were saying the guy was the, the woman was saying you're yelling at me you're not listening to me and then the man said oh you're just over emotional so i just feel like that needs to be listened to if a person is telling you and you're having to write that down so how would they know i received in the decade that i've been here i received a reminder it didn't say friendly and it was confusing i didn't know if it was about rent i didn't know if it was about something else i had no idea it wasn't very clear to me it made no sense because i'd already paid my paid it on the 6th that morning and I uh, that that afternoon but I guess it was delivered that morning so that's what I'm talking about being heavy-handed and I also on my birthday and I think you sent an example because it had the day of my birthday so uh where I was sent a notice to quit without ever whatsoever receiving a friendly reminder so I would just ask people to look at that if you want to say friendly fine put it in there not in a written uh marker trying to tell folks what they're reading is friendly, then that's not how it's received. And that's it. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. May I hear from another commissioner, please, on the executive director's report? I'd like to hear from Commissioner Brooks, if he would, or Commissioner Cancel. Yeah, in what respect you want? You want I'd just like to you to address anything that you have to respond to in the executive director's report. Whether it's regard nothing, okay. Nothing. Well, you know, I think I think I think the report is, to me is clear. Um, when she gives the report, I I I've been on the board long enough to know, um, you know, her her um, uh, her, her 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 things that she brings up on the board. So I really have no questions. Well, thank you. I just wanted to give everyone an opportunity. That, oh, oh, uh, Commissioner Richards, then please. 
Uh, I just want to say I'm delighted uh, that we are collaborating with so many other community programs and that we're really starting out with the Resiliency Center to be as helpful as we can. So, and the Grow Food thing has been wonderful. So I just appreciate hearing about that. So, and Commissioner Cantsau, please, or I can go back to Commissioner Tarbutton if you have. Oh, thank you. Sure. Hi. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, I want to echo what uh, Commissioner Richards um, uh, just uh, uh, talked about. Um, I am really happy about the collaboration. This is uh, really what it should it, it should look like, and it's great that we're um, uh, that we're uh, actually providing more and more access. Um, you know, uh, every time that we do these types of collaborations. Um, I did hear about um, uh, tenants being upset about the letters and saying friendly reminder. Um, and in uh, some people's minds, you know, it's not a friendly reminder if, if it has, you know, um, talks about fees and charges and stuff like that. So um, I know it's kind of difficult to um, navigate this stuff and and to actually get the job done. So I understand all of that, um, but I do agree that um, maybe we should just um, re-examine uh, the policy around um, uh, notices to tenants and uh, when in regards to uh, rent and stuff. So um, that's really, uh, and then in terms of the annual uh, report, uh, I don't know if this this is the time to uh, talk about that. Well, we will we will actually when that when that item is brought up and seconded, I'll open it for discussion for people to to okay. discuss whether or not okay, they need to approve. Yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Yes, may I suggest um, to save some trees if people got a phone call, a courtesy call. Uh, you get courtesy calls when you go to the doctor. Reminder: Maybe that is what would be considered friendly or uh, we got emails I, if we could send an email because i know when that happened with me when i got the notice to quit two other people you know it was the we were getting the balconies clean and it was a mess and i had to go to texas two other people who had uh uh i don't know what is they had it in their, their apartment and they didn't send it downstairs they got a phone call from the office i would have appreciated that because it was sometimes it's just a misunderstanding or sometimes, you know, with mine, I didn't put the uh, apartment number clearly written, even though I put it on the envelope. So there are some things that happen that maybe we should think about uh, a robo courtesy call that would probably save a tree and uh, be construed as friendly. Commissioner Cantel? I see your hand again. Maybe it's maybe it was still up. Uh, no, no, I did raise my hand again. Um, and uh, um, uh, actually, I wanted to. Um, so that I think on what I read, uh, what we're going to talk about later in terms of the electronic payment, I think that one of the features is going to be um, uh, remind, electronic reminder. So we're we're, we're definitely, if, if that's the case, where I, I think we're 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 moving in the right direction with that. Okay. Is there anyone else who has a, a comment for the dir director's report? If not. I'm going to move on then to the next item, which is the approval of the minutes of the um, February meeting. Um, would someone please offer a motion for approval of the February 2023 meeting? Did I motion see to approve? Thank you, Commissioner yes. Brooks, and seconded by second. Okay, are there any additions, subtractions, or corrections for these minutes? Yes, Commissioner Tubbett. Yeah, I don't, you know, it's interesting, you know, uh, the brevity is a good thing, but I'm actually, when I read that, it's almost like, I'm like, what What was that about? I, I miss, not the editorializing of the minutes, but I, I do miss more than this, 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 because, uh, uh, but then again, that's why I end up going on the uh, the YouTube the video so I can remember what that is. So it is an extra little step, but I think it's worthwhile, particularly if it's on YouTube, there is a CC part where you can look at the transcript. So it's good, I guess, legally, you know, from the training where that's what we're supposed to do. But I do miss um, a comment here and a 
reason why. So, uh, you know, I think it feels a little half done, but I get it and I, I support it. <laughs> is, there, is there anyone else who has a comment about the minutes? Oh, yes, Commissioner. Um, I like it. I like the brevity of it, um, especially because uh, when we combine it with the um, uh, with the video, um, then you have everything you need right there. So um, I think it, it definitely saves a little paper and uh, the earth is a little better off for it. <laughs> Thank you. I actually, if I might interject, what I appreciate is the saving of the staff time. I felt so bad for whoever mm -hmm. had to sit and listen to the whole meeting and transcribe. I, I mean, I'm such a terrible typist myself, but I appreciate that we've let technology do that through the transcription services of Zoom, that we have both the video through Zoom, and now we have Northampton Open Media to cover any questions, any concerns, any confusion anyone has about the meeting. And we have the legal requirement of the recorded motions who made them, who seconded, what were the votes? And that's what the minutes should entail. So thank you everyone. I see this as a positive step forward. And I think we can maybe move forward to the next item, which is old business. Did we vote? Oh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Would you please, oh, I'll ask for a motion then from the floor. If someone would move to approve the minutes. Move, move to, to approve. approve. Sorry, was that already moved and approved? Yes, moved? yes. Okay, then yeah, you I may call the roll, please. Sure. Uh, approval of the February 2023 minutes. Chairperson Carney? Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel? Yes. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Thank you. Um, one absent and uh, five yays, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. I'm still getting the hang of this, uh, I think, because I have to switch back and forth with screens, but I think our next item is all business. Am I right? Yes. Okay, and um, what is the, I, I have to keep switching here. So po po policy, policy on board training, travel, and reimbursements continue. Okay, okay. And so uh, um, let me speak on this first, because <clears throat> When we brought this up, we had said that we would try to, you know, get some some sense of how we might move forward with this um, issue on terms of board training and where to get the financing or what the parameters might be. And I think that we had also we had also reached out to Attorney Driscoll to give us some other advice around this too about what would be appropriate. <clears throat> And um, we were hoping to get him, not a, he wasn't able tonight, but at a future meeting to discuss anything like this. But I know that also though, that um, Commissioner, uh, um, I'm sorry, Jeff Jones had also a number of thoughts about this matter himself based on kind of trainings that they do for their executive board. So I would hate to, um, and also we don't have actually a motion to put on the floor for discussion. So what I've been trying to do in terms of as we move enough forward in meetings, I'm hoping that people will introduce a motion that, that, that we couldn't of course vote on that night because it would be new business then. But if there is a motion that is introduced by a, a commissioner, and if that motion then is seconded, that opens the floor for discussion. And at that point, we discuss what the particular proposal might be. For example, someone might say, I would like to make a motion that the Northampton Housing Authority send or a fund, allow funding for each of the board of commissioners to attend $3,000 uh, trainings four times a year. And then that motion would have to be seconded by a person on the board. If, the, if there were no second, there'd be no discussion. However, if there were a, a, a something that got a second, then we would discuss that motion and we would vote on that as, does that make sense to people? Or could I take some questions if people don't understand that piece of Robert's rules? Well, I, I get the Rob. Oh. Oh, yes, please, Commissioner Tarrant. Yeah. I get the part of the Robert's rules. My question is, uh, and this is from a previous month, so I just wanted to be clear. Uh, 
most, if not all of the trainings, especially for resident board members are free. And I think to date from variety of things from the Office of Attorney General to Office, uh, Office of Inspector General, it was 15 bucks and uh, Kara did pay for that, but from the Mel King and from a number of agencies, they were absolutely free. The one thing that cost was the convention. And so that was something there, but I, 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 I think that to try to, I, I think that these are things that we need to take seriously. I remember when I first came on the board, uh, the board got cited by the Office of the Attorney General. I guess it was something with the open meeting law <clears throat> and the, in the I, I couldn't find the article in the paper, but it said something like, well, we're gonna continue with the training. And I was really uh, encouraged by that because mm -hmm. training is continual. And uh, so, I do get that there needs to be something. I'm, I, I wish Gary LaPace was here, but I often, I heard from the same trainer that we went through that uh, LHAs have $12,000 uh, uh, $12, for professional de uh, development. I, I guess I was the only one utilizing it, but I would, uh, I don't really know ab about that. Only thing I can do is go to other uh, meetings and sit in and ask other people, what, what do they do for training? But usually, as uh, Commissioner Jeff Jones said, that's usually encouraged. I, mm -hmm. I, I let people know uh, at least three months because I didn't know much about it, and um, I, 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 I don't want. That's not a very good. That's a, that's a stain that I was the only one in that meeting would to pay. Even presidents of local tenant organizations. Yeah, excuse me, Commissioner. I'm, I'm sorry, but I would like to invite you to offer a proposal to this board. Sure. I offer that if someone wants to go training and uh, first of all, to try to make it free first, if it's available, but that it should be available to uh, e everyone on the board member, um, board of commissioners, that that is something that is encouraged. And it, I don't know what the budget is. I was told 12,000, but I would like that it could be for that amount. Could I have a second? Second. Okay, thank you. Now, okay, so now we're going to vote on this. And I could you clarify that motion then? I think it was, I think you made the motion and it was seconded that the, the training would be encouraged for all board members. And that if there is money in the budget available, then it shall be used for any board mem member seeking training. And yeah. Is that, a, yeah. is that a correct word yeah. of that motion? Is yeah, that I just didn't put a timeline with it. I didn't put it like you have to have three months before you know, because some of these things not everybody goes to, but upon notification, if there's something you would like to go to, um, you can okay. submit it. Okay, so the motion was made that if a board member submits requests to the board, to the board, requests to the board? Yes. Okay, or three indeed. months in advance in a training, for a training, that that training shall be approved and funded. And uh, is that the second that you, you seconded that, Jim? Yep. So I'm going, to, I'm going to ask if there's anybody who has anything to start with discussion about that besides the mover and second. Commissioner or Attorney O'Connor, you look like you're moving forward towards the mic. I am. Um, the Thank you. The policy on board training is what's on the agenda. There's not a, a motion on the agenda. So um, I would suggest it be safer in terms of Robert's rules and open meeting law to put the motion on for next meeting. Um, Very good. And, you know, perhaps continue this discussion right now because we have a motion on the table that has been seconded, but okay. don't hold the vote today. Yeah. In fact, what I'd like to do is if if commissioners would agree is if we could defer the discussion until next meeting, because then Commissioner Jones will also be here. And I know he had some parameters he discussed when we were at our training regarding regarding, you know, other people seeking approval for training. So if folks were OK, I would ask them just as a matter of course, because we can't vote on it, if we would be able to continue this. But first, I saw. Commissioner Richard's hand. No, I was going to say that would have been my suggestion because I really would like to hear from Commissioner Jones. I mean, he sees a lot of people and goes into a lot of organizations, and I think he would have a, really some good information for us. 
Okay, and there may be amendments that people might offer. Like, for example, somebody might be concerned and say, I would like to offer that there be a, you know, a $5,000 max or something like that. I don't know. But at least that gives opportunity at the NAC, because amendments can be offered, Attorney O'Connor, right? At the, as long as the topic itself yes. is on the agenda. Then I think that's the safest way to do this. We made the, Tar Commissioner Tarbutton made the motion seconded and then it will appear on on next um month's agenda and we'll have the discussion then i'd like to address something oh around yes this. well yeah sure I, I i i don't have any problems with that but it was tabled to this meeting from last month so i would uh but if you prefer we can have the discussion but well, then it, it, you know, uh, the, the thing is, uh, when you're saying that, I would also uh, encourage if we could contact uh, attorney uh, trainer uh, Jeffrey Driscoll, because um, that's where I got the information, unless I heard it wrong. So I'd like to get that. Uh, I do think uh, uh, Commissioner Jeff Jones did give some insight, because I do think that people in his organization, um, uh, you know, that was helpful. But I, 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 I get nervous that if, you know, if it's something here that we've we voted for, and you're the chair. You can uh, decide whether or not we want to put the to a vote or not. But I just no, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't have a vote on it because it, we would have to have had notified. Right? Is that what you're saying, Attorney O'Connor? Mm -hmm. There was only okay. discussion. We didn't actually have the motion. Mm -hmm. So now that we have a motion, yeah. well, that people will be notified about for next month. We wouldn't be able to vote tonight in any event. Right. I don't want to squash discussion or feel like I'm squashing it about this. I just feel like we would have a more full discussion if we also had Commissioner Jones here and and Attorney Driscoll if he were available. But if you if you feel if you don't want to continue this, Commissioner Tarbutton, I think you're saying you don't want to continue it. You want to have the discussion tonight. Uh, no, actually, I'm not saying that. I just wanted to make some comments be known that I thought that this is what we were doing. I get it about that it wasn't made into a motion. Um, and I shared my feelings, so I don't need to repeat that, but I'm fine. Yes, Commissioner Richards. Yeah, I was gonna say what would be helpful for me is to know how much money is in the budget for training. So we could ask for next meeting that uh, Director Leeper would please provide that for us. And uh, how, you know, how in general has it been used? or what is it being used for this fiscal year we got that, that would be helpful to know whether there's hundred thousand dollars and there are ten thousand dollars <laughs> I, I i think that we should we should probably try uh try to get the history on it for, for the last two years two or three years um and i think Kara could probably get that history um, that if that that would give us a better idea of um, of how much it had been used or if it had ever been used. Are there any other suggestions before we take the vote on whether to continue this to the next meeting? Then I, I guess um since the since the motion was made and seconded we also now need a motion to continue madam chair i think you as the chair you can just table it and, and move it to the next meeting okay then i'll under i'll take that under advisement right. tabled until uh the next meeting and we'll move on to new business i believe we have a couple of resolutions on the table so i will ask Pulling them up right now. The resolution for the approval of the whoops plan. Do you want to read this in its entirety, Secretary Leeper? Certainly. Uh, this is resolution 2023-01. Adopt the 2024 federal annual plan, the 2023 to 2027 federal five-year capital plan and related policies and certifications. Whereas the Northampton Housing Authority operates as a public housing program and housing choice voucher program 
both funded in part by the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, and whereas the NHA has prepared an annual plan in compliance with 24 CFR 903, and whereas HUD requirements for adoption by the Board of Commissioners include certification of various forms. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Northampton Housing Authority adopts the 2023 federal plan, annual plan, and the 2023 to 2027 federal five-year capital plan and amendments to the admissions and continued occupancy policy, section eight administration plan. And further, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority hereby authorizes and directs the executive director to sign on behalf of the authority, the certification for a drug-free workplace, the certification of payments to influence federal transactions, the disclosure of lobbying activities, and further authorizes the chairperson to certify the adoption of this resolution and other certifications by signing the required forms. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority, believing its annual plan to be consistent with the comprehensive plan of the City of Northampton, hereby authorizes and directs the Executive Director to seek the signature of Mayor Gina Louise Sierra, and further, be it resolved that the amendments to the admissions and continued occupancy plan and the Section 8 administrative plan shall take effect upon approval of the annual plan by HUD or July 1st, 2023, whichever is sooner and further be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority in adopting the PHA plan, admissions and continued occupancy plan and Section 8 administrative plan preserves the severability of the remaining segments of plans and policies of any portion of the plans and policies not approved by HUD. Maureen, you are muted, muted. I'm sorry, I'm asking for a motion from the floor then to approve this resolution. Motion to question. approve. And is there a second? Second. Okay, did you get those? Secretary? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and now uh, I'll open it up for discussion and Commissioner Tarbin, please. Yes, I'm um, sorry. I, 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 I... Uh, listen to the report and I, I I didn't know if I saw that report that you had written down. I've been looking for it, but again, my eyesight is a little clouded here. So it says a drug free in the HUD properties. It, it, I heard that much. Is that correct? I, actually, um, Commissioner Tarbutton, the drug free document is that it's a drug free workplace. It's a document. So that it, I, okay. It's a certification for a drug free workplace that I'm required to sign on drug. Okay of the board and it's does that include okay is uh, we can't hear you if you're okay anyone else no i i i, I wasn't finished i had a question about the i'm sorry i may be having some computer problems no here. no now we can hear you okay does that include uh nicotine does that include drug-free workplace for hud i'm just curious Nicotine is not considered um, a, a drug, an illegal drug. Okay. Anyone else? Any comments? Then if there are no more commissioner comments, I'll ask the, the secretary to call the roll. Yes, resolution 2023-01. Approval of the FY 2024 federal annual plan, annual plan and the federal five-year five year capital plan. Chairperson Carney? Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Cancel? He's muted. Uh, no. Commissioner, uh, uh, Commissioner Brooks? Uh, uh, yes. Commissioner Tarbutton? Uh, I'll say no. Commissioner Richards. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, with two nays and three yays, your motion passes. Motion carries. Thank you. Can you read the next motion, please? Certainly. Let me just, I have to get down to it. The next motion is. Sorry, the resolution, and then I'll ask if there's a motion to approve from the floor. 
just get it, get to it. There's a lot of these pages here. Thank you. This would be resolution 2023-02, which is approval of the capital fund program amendment to the annual contributions contract or ACC. Whereas the authority wishes to accept the funding for capital fund grant number MA01P0265023 in 205 the amount of $305,350 to fund the federal capital fund program to improve its federally funded state aided housing. Therefore, uh, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority does hereby adopt the capital fund, the five-year action plan for fiscal year 2023 to fiscal year 2027, and the increase in funding to 305,750. And further, that it does hereby authorize the executive director to take all actions necessary and proper for implementation of said plan, and further, that the authority and the executive director in their name shall be authorized on and after the approval of the said plan to do and perform on behalf of the authority all acts and the things required of the authority to perform fully all obligations of the plan. And further, that the resolution shall take effect immediately. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve from the floor? Motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Moved and seconded, and now it's open for discussion. So this is the annual plan that we're talking about. Oh. Yes, yes please, Commissioner Tarbutton, the capital plan, the capital plan. Oh, the capital plan, not the annual plan. We already voted on the annual plan. Okay. Do you have a question on the capital plan? Well, yeah, it was a, it's a it's confusing, so I'll just, I'll, I'll reflect that in my vote. Yes, please, Commissioner Richards. Uh, I guess it would be um, helpful to me. I guess my impression is this is sort of a given, like we don't have a lot of choice in this. And I'd like to um, ask for clarification on this. Are you asking the director? Yes, I am, sorry. So it's it's not that you don't have a choice. Um, every, everyone, it has to be voted on by the board. But essentially, well, yeah. this is, um, at, you know, they require us to do a five year plan to allocate this three hundred and five thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Um, and so it's for things like, um, you know, it's it's the money right now that we're using to replace the elevator at McDonald's. Um, you know, for a couple of years. 100% um, of the money was allocated just to McDonald's so that we could replace the elevators. Um, now coming in, um, in the coming years, some of the money, uh, Florence Heights requires new siding. So um, in order to get Florence's Heights siding done, uh, one of the years, 20, I think it's 24, I have to go back and look, but um, takes all, almost all of the money and allocates it just for siding. Um, so this, this has to do with the capital improvement program, um, that we're going to do for over the next five years, based upon the capital needs assessment that's been done. And the extra 300 and some odd thousand. No, it is three, it is 305. Uh, three, oh, that's what it is. Okay. 305,750. Correct. Okay. You're, Got it. You're, Thank you. it, you're accepting, you're essentially accepting this money to do these things. Thank you. Yeah, that's. I think I was trying to say that, but I wasn't very effective at it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I think I think if I can sum that up, we're saying we can accept the money or not accept the money. Is there another comment? Yes, please, Commissioner Kansa. Uh Yeah, um, I'm definitely voting affirmative on on this. Um, I just uh, I, I, my concern was with. Uh, the, the, how the annual plan uh, was advertised uh, to both the board and the um, and the residents, and I think we need to do a better job at um, making that available as soon as possible and making it clear to everyone how it is available and um, and uh, how they can participate in the process of um, uh, uh, creating that plan, including 
uh, having a, a, an active resident advisory board. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. I think folks will read that that referred to the previous motion and appreciate your clarifying how you'll decide on this. But I think we've heard now from everyone, unless there's anyone wants to speak again on the capital plan. If not, Secretary, please call the roll. Yes, resolution 2023-02, approval of the FY23 um, federal capital fund ACC amendment. Chairperson Carney? Yes. Vice Chairperson Cancel? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton? No. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Madam Chair, four yeas and one nay. Thank you. And could you please read the final resolution? Yes. Madam Secretary. Okay. So uh, this is this is just a motion. Um, and what I'd like to do, uh, if you don't mind, before I read the motion, um, with your permission, Madam Chair, I'd like to ask Jack to play um, a, a, a very short two and a half minute video uh, for the board. Are you opposed to that? No, please. Okay. Uh, Jack, if you could um, cue up the, um, thank you. <laughs> So in 2018, I brought this to the board. Uh, some of you were here, some of you were not. Um, and um, it went by the wayside due to COVID. Um, some, a lot of things have changed since then with regards to what is out there for us. Um, and uh, essentially based upon really wanting to get the business, we were able to get um, the uh, monthly service fees and yearly access fees waived. Um, I think that this, you'll find that this is a um, wonderful thing to be able to offer our residents. Um, Jack, go ahead and, and play the quick video and then I'll go into further what it does. Rent payment from MRI software is a fast and easy way to pay your rent. You can securely pay from anywhere by credit card, debit card, online, with the mobile app and more. Tenants and residents can choose from an existing payment that has been entered into the system, or they can add a payment method, credit card, debit card, or ACH. The balance summary will show up to 10 line items. Auto pay. Reoccurring payments can be scheduled by choosing a day of the month, a frequency, a start date, and an end date. The end date saves your staff time from doing any reverse payments in the future. The tenants and residents can choose a fixed amount or paying the balance in full by setting up a minimum and a maximum amount to prevent their account from being overdrawn. Setting up reminders. Tenants and residents can subscribe to receive text message reminders that also allow for payments through the text once a form of payment has been stored in their account. Email reminders include a link allowing for payments to be made. Under my account, payments by phone can be managed. By calling this phone number, rent payment will auto-generate a profile for new residents with an account number that will be used when making the payment by phone. When paying by cash, they will be using MoneyGram locations. MoneyGram has over 60,000 locations to allow for easy accessibility for your tenants and residents. MoneyGram is both auditable and trackable. Payments can be reported to the credit bureau for free. And flyers can be printed or emailed in both English and in Spanish, choosing the closest MoneyGram locations. Our marketing team will help you with resources such as flyers, door hangers, and magnets to assist you in achieving a high adoption rate. We also have an adoption team that will help you make the most of your marketing tools and pivot where needed. Thank you, Jack. Um, that, that the, re the rest of the video is really towards its implementation. Um, and so 
what I'll what I'll be asking the board is um, first of all, all the costs are transactional. There's no fixed monthly fees. Um, each ACH or e check um, would cost the housing authority 86 cents. Um, and then if a resident chooses to do um, other forms of payment, for example, you know, a credit card or an American Express, um, they would pay a transactional fee and it's charged right there with them. Um, if they choose to go to MoneyGram, and I did pull the list um, of the closest 10 places, um, all within our properties, CBS, Walmart, um, and there's a CBS right up the street from, from the two bigger properties. Um, those are places that you can actually take cash and it turns it, it turns the cash or the debit card into an ACH tr um, transaction. Um, check scanning would be 86 cents. Um, residents will have the opportunity to even make a phone call to pay their rent um, if they choose to uh, and be charged a per transaction um, fee. Uh, miscellaneous fees that we would pay um, that we would you know, turn around and pass back to the resident if they're incurred is um, $30 for any kind of bounce check on the e-check or ACH. Um, bank account blocks are $75 and char chargebacks are $25. Um, so I'm asking that you authorize me to execute a contract with the company MRI and Hab Inc. for this resident payment solutions. Whereas the motion is to continue forward with our Go Green initiative and allow residents the ability to pay online, this new solution, which integrates into our existing software systems, will allow residents to receive rent reminders via text and email uh, and pay in the following ways. Text message, email, e-check online, debit card, credit card, use of the free mobile app, use cash at any of the 40,000 MoneyGram locations, or pay by phone with a support call center that has over 200 plus language interpreters. Therefore, the motion is for the Board of Commissioners to allow the executive director to enter to execute the said contract with MRI and HAB Inc. for resident payment solutions at the one-time cost implementation and training in the amount of $1,510, purchase six check scanners at the price of $579 each for a total of $3,470. Lastly, ongoing fees, which will be, be determined based upon which payment option the resident chooses. Further, that the board authorizes me in your name and on and after the execution of the said contract to do and perform on behalf of the authority, all acts and the things required of the authority to perform fully all obligations of the contract. Is there a motion from the floor, a motion to approve? Motion to approve. May I have a second? Second. Moved Commissioner Richard, seconded Commissioner Brooks. And we'll have discussion now. First, please, Commissioner Tarbutton. Um, I would like to look at this a little bit more before I decide on it. But my question to you is, um, I think this is really great. It's just the fees are exorbitant. And uh, I was thinking, you know, I pay just for peace of mind. I get a money order. It is usually a buck oh five. Uh, just because there, you know, when times when it hasn't been deposited as soon as possible, I'd like to have it taken care of right then and there. But um, you mentioned in a meeting before that when someone asks if you wrote checks, you say, no, we pay our landlords by electronically. So do you have to go through this to pay your land? I assume that's voucher aid or uh, section eight or voucher program. So do you pay your landlords it, and uh, have a fee assessed in this manner? And also, I just would think, you know, this is uh, the fees. And it's like, it, to me, it feels like already poor people are paying stuff and they have to pay even more just to participate. Because we know we'll have some people who just will not understand it. I'm still working with tenants so they can just check their text messages or hear their messages. So we'll have some people who do not uh, have it. It sounds great, but when you get to the fine print, especially with those fees. So I was just wondering, um, is there a way that you can add, forget the yearly fee or whatever, just, you know, pay it without having a fee. I know if I get a parking ticket, I pay online, I pay, and then I'm assessed a small fee, but maybe to see if the city or something would uh, help with those fees, because I think it is uh, punishing. It feels punishing. It sounds like a great idea, 
but are you already doing it? And do you pay a fee when you pay your landlords, as you said? Commissioner Cancel, would you mind allowing uh, Director Leeper to answer Commissioner Tarbutton's question? Thank you. Com so Commissioner, Commissioner Tarbutton, if the resident chooses to pay by an e-check, which is automated and um, so for example, they go in and they, you know, put their routing number and bank account information. They don't pay anything. It's free for them. Um, we actually pay a fee of 86 cents per transaction for that. Um, and we do not pass that on to the resident. So that would be free for them. The only fees the resident would pay is if they used to use a credit card, a debit card, an Amex, or, um, if they go and they take cash, they go to MoneyGram and they do it in that fashion. Did, did Director Leeper answer your question, Commissioner Tarbutton? I have a follow-up, but let me look it up. I'll let uh, uh, Commissioner Gardner go, please. Okay, Commissioner Cancel, and then we'll go back for the follow-up. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, actually, if I can just hear the fees again, I, I am actually really, really excited and really proud of us for finally um, looking into this and, um, and providing this service. Uh, and um, I don't have a problem with the fees at all, uh, except I know it is. It, it will be hard for folks if they, if they for some reason, you know, uh, bounce a check or that, you know, um, or, you know, get fees from their bank for using their debit card. And, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, it is, um, uh, it is a little bit worrisome. But right here with this, with this, this is, this is one of the solutions we've been uh, talking about for, for a long time. So I'm really thankful. Thank you, Kara, for, um, and, and the staff for um, looking and putting as much work as you have to to uh, figure this out. This is great. Uh, I'm just, uh, if you could just mention the fees again. So so an ACH or an e-check, that's like, that's comparable to when you go to um, a company's website, um, um, you know, or like like uh, Commissioner Tarbutton mentioned, going and parking, paying the parking fees. Um, you you often have the uh, choice to use a debit card or put in your banking information. Um, if they use the debit card, they'll pay a transactional fee of five dollars and ninety five cents. Um, but if they put in their uh, banking information, it's absolutely free to them. Um, so uh, obviously, we will be we will be trying to help as many people as possible get on the ACH because they can choose when they do it even. Uh, they can choose when it happens. So for example, in another residence instance, um, they get SSDI and so their checks don't come in until the third. Uh, if, they, uh, if they want to um, set it up automatically on you know, this, the seventh that it's automatically paid to us, via an ACH, there's no charge to them. We will be covering the 86 cents per transaction for that. Um, and how I can justify that is that the amount of time it takes us to key in checks, and I have a person currently that keys in, one person that keys in every single check, then puts them all on a deposit ticket, and then personally takes them to the bank and makes the deposit. This will automate that process. And the more people that get it automated, the more that'll free up that up that person to do something else in our agency, um, in the finance department. Um, and so our goal will be to try to get as many people um, and, and having lots of trainings um, to get people to go through the ACH e-check. Uh, if they use a credit card, um, just like any other place, it is a 3% per transaction um, incurred by the resident. Um, if, for example, uh, you know, it would be 3% on the rent that they're paying. So if their rent's 200, 3% of that. Um, American Express, uh, they would charge the resident 3.77%. If they wanna just put in their debit card, um, it's 595 per transaction um, or MoneyGram. So that's the one where they can go to the CVS or Walmart and use any form of payment like uh, you know cash or money order or check or whatever it is. There's a $3.50 per transaction incurred by the resident. Um, the scanning um, is uh, covered by us, 86 cents. So if someone physically brings us a check because they can't get on one of these programs or just don't want to get on one of these programs, we would scan the check and it would put it in a batch and electronically deposit it. 
um, the phone pay uh, feature, which is where they can make a phone call to and speak to anyone speaking over 200 languages um, is 995. Um, In-person fees is 2.5% per transaction, but that's incurred by Northampton. Um, then the ACH or e-check returns are $30. Um, that's essentially um, initially charged to us. All of these, all of these miscellaneous fees um, are charged um, to us, but we would then turn around and, and charge them back to the resident. Um, but we'll make that clear when we do the training and, and everything, um, how important that is. Um, so any adjustments would be $75. Bank account block is $75. Chargebacks are $25. But again, those 30, 75, 75, and 25 are things that we incur. But if we incur them as a result of the resident, you know, not managing their money properly or whatever the case may be, we would invoice the resident. Um, then the implementation, implementation and training, and, and essentially that's just mapping all the apartments to the proper bank accounts and whatnot, training of staff, um, uh, training them how to scan the checks to the bank, um, $1,510, which is a one-time cost. And then um, we need six scanners and that's $579 per scanner. Um, that's one for each and every property management office so that checks are not having to be taken over to McDonald House with potential of getting lost. Um, it's mm -hmm. to have the on-site offices and have residents be able to drop it off, although we still have some people that take their money right over to McDonald House. I, I just think that it will cut down that time, the time that it costs, uh, the, the time that it takes to get the money into the bank, the time that it takes to process the money. Um, and, and so... That's why we did check scanners at each property. Did I answer your question, Commissioner Cancel? Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutt, yeah. may I um, first, uh, I, may I defer to Commissioner Richards and then back here? Yeah. Yes, I just wanted to say, I think this is a great step forward. I agree with Commissioner Cancel. Uh, and the fees to me sound pretty reasonable uh, considering if, things go as hopefully they will after training, people shouldn't incur any cost as long as they manage their money correctly. <laughs> I know it will save a lot of staff time. And the other thing I really like about it is that the same message goes to the, all the residents, you know, at the appropriate time. So, it, you know, I th think it saves a lot of headache as far as communication goes too. Thank you. And Commissioner Tarbot. Um, Yeah, I just wanted to say I agree. Uh, and as I said, the, th the theory part of it sounds really great. Um, my question is, um, say you just, uh, Carrie, you just mentioned uh, two things that you mentioned. That I think that I'd like to get a little bit more information. You said, say, for example, if someone gets SSDI and they get it on the third and then they want to direct it to be on the seventh, are you still going to send in a late notice? Oh, so um, what happens is, First of all, that's where the confusion lies. The notice that goes out, any notice that goes out about rent before the 10th is just a friendly reminder. Um, that is not a late rent notice. Um, the notice to quit is the late rent notice and that is done on or around the 10th, never before the 10th of the month. Um, so would we still do that? Um, yeah, uh, the board asked us to send out be, because initially we were just around the 10th of the month, you know, not before, but sometime on or after the 10th of the month, we would serve notices to quit and the board was being bombarded with, well, why aren't we getting reminders? And so the board asked us to start sending out friendly reminders. So we, uh, all we essentially do is print the statement from the software uh, that says, here's your statement, which has a blurb at the bottom, which is required. Um, this is what you owe, friendly reminder. Uh, if it's not paid by the 10th, um, it, depending on what day of the week the 10th falls on, we then would start the process of filling out the many, many notices to quit. Um, uh, okay. I think that this will eliminate that uh, as we don't want to have to serve notices to quit or, or send reminders. It's a waste of paper. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Thanks for the uh, long answer. But my question was, if we took this option, would that eliminate the paper? Because it's like, we're still going to be, it's like a good idea, but we're still using a lot of paper. My question is that I would like for, I don't know if I need to make a, for it to be tabled 
for us to think about instead of sending out, especially if they signed up for it, um, instead of sending out a letter, friendly or otherwise, on the 6th or the 7th, we could do a robocall instead. And I like something that you said, and I say this for a lot of stuff that goes on. You say, we're going to train staff. We're going to have, we're going to train residents. Hallelujah. That's what I've been asking for on just about everything that we do, because you just can't do something as soon people are going to get it. Uh, so I think that that's a really wonderful idea about this. I think it's great. My only question with this is, is it, uh, is it instantaneously? I have a few things that I pay for that goes uh, through a check uh, part and, um, it's pretty instantaneous um, the same day or before eight o'clock that evening. So um, I think so that's if you if you go on, if you uh, they have a they have a mobile app as well. Um, if you um, uh, if you go on to the app and you pay there, it's it's instantaneous. Any ACH is is pretty much instantaneous. Um, they process everything at five o'clock. Um, so think of it like a retail store. We're all day long entering payments, entering payments, whatever they are. And then at five o'clock, it cuts off and it, it makes the transactions go through. Um, okay. So, um, so twofold, you had two questions. You asked me, would we still be doing notices? Yes, we would. We're required to do notices. Um, and, um, you know, a robocall isn't going to stand up in court when I have a $5,000 balance due because someone hasn't paid their rent. Um, I need to have backup showing that we serve the notices we're required to. May um, I interject? May I interject just to separate these out for a moment? Yeah. What we're talking about now is just to be able to have the board authorize entering a contract to do this. Yes. I think there's room to consider whether there are different alternatives, robocall or whatever, to change what's already a, a board policy, which is to send a friendly reminder and then a notice to quit. I would entertain that motion to be posted on the next agenda if there's such a motion. But rather than discuss that in the context of this, let's hear a motion on that at, if there's anything to come up you know, and, and deal with that item separately. But let's deal with whether we enter into a contract to allow for electronic rent payment. My one question to the director, for those people who've paid the same way for the past 25 years, will they still have the ability to just take their checkbook and write it and come do the pay the same way they've always paid? Yes. Okay. So that yes. no we'll, okay. we'll, we'll incur a charge of 86 cents, um, but not to them, to the authority, to them, to us, to us. Thank you. Yes, uh, 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 Commissioner. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Tarbutton, were you done or can I defer to Commissioner Cancel and back to you? Perfect. Okay, Commissioner Cancel. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I did have the same question about whether people could uh, still do the same. Same way, so I appreciate that. Um, I had a um, uh, the question uh, was um, is if there's anything um, that we could do about the uh, the debit card uh, charge uh, five ninety five seems a little uh, heavy, um, but I definitely support um, uh, this uh, this motion. There is a motion on the floor, um, and uh, and I I love the fact that you could do the e-check uh, at no cost. Um, and I think, uh, um, Commissioner Tarba, and I think that what you were asking earlier was um, if there is a predetermined time for a particular tenant to pay the rent, and that is not on the second, third, uh, would they, would they get uh, would they still get a notice? And my assumption would be no, because there's already a predetermined time when that person is going to pay the rent. So that's a question for both uh, Commissioner Tarba and, and the director, sorry. Well, I, I, I can answer that. Well, I think uh, uh, Commissioner Chair uh, Carney really does a wonderful job in dissecting. This is this, this is this, let's try this. Okay, so that's a clarity that's really helpful to me. So I appreciate that. Um, I would support this bill a thousand percent, this motion, if 
they weren't incurring letters, friendly or otherwise, and uh, exorbitant fees. There are some people, I don't know exactly, but I've heard people say, I get my SSI or SSDI through a credit card. A debit card, I guess. I'm not quite sure about that. I, I that's not the it, what happens with me. So I think about them. So um, for me to have it scanned, I, I do this all the time. It should be it'd be a wonderful thing. You get everything taken care of. It'd be a plus for the NHA, and I think it'd be a plus for the residents. Except one stumbling thing with all these fees and these notices. If I could just say that is anxiety producing to a group of people who live with anxiety in some ways. So I do would support this if we could discuss uh, that big, uh, at a later meeting, because it would seem to me, if somebody is paying $5,000 a month and they haven't paid that, I you know, I think it's time to be a little unfriendly, a little persuasive, I mean, I, uh, with that, but I think for the regular yeah. Joe Schmo, I don't think that that applies to them, but I wanna know who that $5,000 a month is. Yeah. I wanna be a friend of Jim Brooks, is that you? Sorry. Oh yeah, that's me, yeah. Thank you. I think uh, from what I understand, uh, um, we hear some support and some conditional support, the conditional support being based on whether some future action will be taken by the board to change the policy we presently have regarding sending notices and only reminders and the notice and the notices to quit, because I think right now we have those together in a policy. So I would ask Commissioner Tarbutton regarding that, to consider this item on its own, and then we will have the opportunity, and I, I think Attorney O'Connor is still here. Yes, so if, if a commissioner wanted under new business, and maybe you could clarify this for me, to, to introduce a motion or to, to tell us that they would like to introduce a motion at the next meeting, um, then we would have the opportunity to then put that motion or that proposal onto the next meeting's agenda. And it would only be discussed if there was a second to that motion when the, mo when the motion is introduced. Am I correct? I think that's absolutely correct, yes. Okay. Then if Commissioner Tarbutton would be patient enough to think about this in, in, in itself in a microcosm, and then knowing that they will have the opportunity under new business to introduce a motion, however they may word it, and see if they get a second <laughs> to, under new business, then that would be an item that we would put on the agenda for the next meeting. And I would hope then that that would mean we can close this discussion, move on to a uh, call of the roll by the secretary. Yes, most, this motion is to authorize the executive director to execute a contract with MRI Hab Inc. and purchase equipment to allow resident payment solutions. Chairperson Carney? Yes. Vice Chairperson Kensal? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton? Are you muted, Commissioner Tarbutton? Yes. I'm oh, sorry. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Madam Chair, with five yeas. You're Thank you, then, then that motion carries. So now I'll ask, is there a motion that you'd like to offer Commissioner Chair Button? Or if, you know, I will also say, if you wanna make up some motion between now and when it's time for us to, we can put it then, or if you wanna make it now and see if there's a second, then that would, you know, we can decide how you wanna proceed with this. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Okay. I, 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 yeah. I would like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we would uh, revisit the fees and the notices, particularly the friendly notice uh, associated with our new uh, electronic banking system that um, one would... Uh, I just like for us to talk about it, hopefully to exclude. Unfortunately, uh, I'm going to need to have a motion for us to have a talk about it, because if a oh, motion okay. is made, then we can talk yeah, about it. But just we did say it that isn't clear enough. Just to oh, revisit it isn't clear enough. You have to say, for example, I would like to make a motion that the board eliminate all friendly reminders from this point forward. That's one example. 
or I would like to make a motion that the board word the friendly reminder in such and such a way, and then say how you want it to say. Or I would like to make a motion that the board only send that the director only send out friendly reminders on the sixth of the month. For those are the specific examples that would make up a motion to be approved by the board. Then well, we thank you for the specificity it. because thank I thought you. that's what I said. I would like to make a motion that if they participate in the is it called the ACH or in this program or electronic that we remove friendly reminders on the six. I don't wanna say all friendly reminders because I think they are needed, but that six is what I objected. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Okay, so that being said, uh, Secretary Leeper, were you able to capture that and maybe clarify it for Commissioner Tarbutton and Commissioner Brooks so they know what the motion that will be dealing with next time? Yes, so if I understand this correct, um, jo uh, Commissioner Tarbutton has made a motion that if residents choose to participate in ACH, that they it, they are um, then not sent a friendly reminder on the 6th. Okay, then I think we have at least one item under new business for the next month. Oh, uh, and yes, Commissioner Richards, well, I guess I'm concerned that some people might want a friendly reminder. Some people don't. I mean, how many units? You know, we're talking about a lot of people here who have a lot of different needs. I'm going to ask wants. Commissioner Richards, I'm going to just ask you to hold off on that discussion about it, because that's what we'll do next month. We'll discuss, we'll discuss the pros and cons of the motion that was offered. And it may be that it needs to be amended, or it may be that we find that it's not going to work, or that there, but it depends on those six commissioners who are here next month to discuss when we when this motion is offered. And it's already been offered it in second. And what we're going to do is yeah. put it on the agenda for next month. Does that make sense? Well, the the last thing I wanted to say is I don't think we should get our hands too deep in operations because. The folks that run the business know the people know the know the business, and we're talking about a machine. So I'll I agree, uh, Commissioner Richards. I agree, except that we have a past precedent of the board interjecting itself regarding notices in the past. We decided because residents came to us and said we want friendly reminders. We made a we established a policy to do it, but now apparently so. In this case here, maybe it is something that warrants discussion, but the, you brought up some very important points. Residents need to know, residents will need to know that they'll no longer get those reminders. And so for those that have depended on those reminders, they need to be able to hear about, know that this is on the agenda, and then know to be able to come and say, look, I want my reminder. So it's so it's good. There's again, we have so many people here, and then the commissioners are going to have to decide whether or not to um, ask to stop sending the March the the sixth of the month friendly reminder to people who are enrolled in the ACH program. Um, a, a quick question about it, though, and I and I know it's probably a question <laughs> for when we have the discussion itself. So I'll hold it. I'll hold it until we have the discussion because this motion will be discussed and it will be voted on by whichever commissioners are available to be here at the next meeting. I do have a question. Sound fair? <laughs> Sound fair? fair? Yeah, I do have one other. Oh, uh, yes. First, Commissioner Tarbutt and then back to Commissioner Cancel. Uh, I'm so anxious for us to do these teach ins. That's what I call them when you're teaching someone. When will that happen? And I think, because unless something happened, being the having the ability to be a, a, a resident and also on the board of commissioners, I don't remember, unless it's before I got here, any discussions about any reminders about rent. Uh-oh, sorry. Oh, shoot. Commissioner Cantel? Oh, wait a minute. You can, you oh, can I'm sorry, me? you're still here. Yeah, we can see you. Oh, I can't see you guys, but I don't remember that happening. So I don't remember when and it became, it came an issue, sorry, it came an issue where people said they need a friendly reminder. Because a simple solution is get a survey, do a tally and ask them instead of them having to come here and all that. 
what is going yeah. on? And that may um, be the result. That may be the result of our discussion. We may decide, okay. hey, we need more resident input. Who knows, Commissioner Kanta? If, if but, um, uh, well, Madam Chair, if I could interrupt just briefly, please, please, this entire discussion, will, this this very very important discussion that we're having, is should be moved to the agenda where we properly can have the discussion next meeting. We Thank have you, we have gone off the rails here in terms of <laughs> um, having a discussion that is not on the agenda. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to, uh, so I'm trying mm -hmm. to do my best here as the chair to keep us yep. in the legal realms of open meeting law. So we we all know now that we can't discuss this, you know, until we all get together again, because we have to do, do this in a notified way. People need to know that we're discussing this thing about notices. <laughs> and so I'll stop the discussion here and ask if there's, and I'll ask Commissioner Cancel if he has something other than that to talk about. No, thank you, Attorney ah. Connor. That was precisely my uh, my uh, concern. I wanted just to move along until next, next meeting. Okay. Well, if there's no other business, then I'll ask if there's one final motion. Anyone? Motion to dismiss. Move to adjourn. Thank you. Oh, I heard a motion and I heard a second.